Hey, what's up, my friends? Jason Woodland here back again with Always the Journey TV. This is episode number 55. And uh, just pulling up my notes here. All right. So what is Always the Journey TV? We're here to uh, show spotlights on people out here in the community doing cool things uh, with their businesses, their jobs, their music, their art, their side hustles, their event space and everything in between. I sincerely appreciate you dedicating your time to learning about people out here that we're spotlighting. Uh, Utah has got an amazing group of people that I'm extremely blessed and thankful to know, and I'm glad to be able to show them off uh, to my friends and network. Uh, today, I'm really excited about uh, introducing to many of you and reintroducing to some of you my dear friend Tommy Green. Um, we had him on uh, one of the episodes for alwaysthejourney.com uh, uh, when it was uh, just strictly uh, audio. And now we're obviously doing these videos. So uh, Tommy is the founder and board member of Run Against Traffic, a Utah nonprofit organization committed to resourcing and funding programs uh, dedicated to long-term aftercare of survivors of human trafficking. Um, this guy has got a huge heart, and he's out there making huge uh, things happen in the community uh, with this ma amazing organization. We're going to be touching on that also. Um, he is also a, uh, a part of a new social media platform called Pivot that is spelled uh, P-Y-V-O-T-T. -T. Um, it launched in just September of 2021 out of Orem, Utah. Uh, the app exists to break barriers and authentically connect. Uh, with innovative features like customizable and deletable feeds for uh, user privacy, as well as auto uh, follow personal likes, Pivot is set to transform the social media landscape. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, Pivot will also be donating a dollar for each download of their free social media app uh, between the dates of December 1st of 2021 and January 11th of 2022. Uh, to the Run Against Traffic organization, up to 100,000 downloads. Um, this is a huge deal. So uh, definitely keep your eye out for that. Uh, get in your uh, phone and uh, download that uh, Pivot app today. Uh, the free social media app is available in the United States uh, currently and is both on uh, Google Play and Apple App Stores. So ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce my dear friend, Tommy Green. What's up? <laughs> What's up, man? Let's do it, dude. That was awesome. Hey, you're doing That's what I'm good. saying. Yo. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for having me on again, Jason. I have mad love for you. Thank you, Thanks. man. You too. It's it's such a pleasure. And uh, and and you know, uh, late uh, I think it was what October October 2020. I decided to actually pivot uh, from audio only to video because I found that a lot of people were like they were really enjoying the the. Uh, audio only but it's fun to have a face behind uh the voice yeah so. yo that's cool uh, yeah. that was when october i think it was october it was october november I, i'm pretty sure dang you know it could have been even september but we're on episode number 55 um 2021 i've just wow. done them like once to twice a month it sort of chilled out a little bit but uh when when i first launched the always the journey tv we were nailing like two to four interviews a week so cool yeah Man, that's awesome yeah yeah well, so uh, dude thank you so much for being on the show i'm so excited uh to have you back um in the in this sort of flesh right yeah, yeah since we're still, uh virtual but uh this is great so you know what tommy um i want to know um well i know but i want my listeners to know what is run against traffic what was the original inspiration behind run against traffic mm. Yeah, that's that's a good question. So, um, <clears throat> the I think the overarching vision of Running Against Traffic was we wanted to do with running and community uh, something similar. Right, the picture that I had was, uh, which is actually a good one, even though it's a little. <laughs> we wanted to model and build a foundation, so a fundraising organization that would do for long-term aftercare for human trafficking survivors would do for them what Lance Armstrong's foundation did for cancer research. Um, the reason I say that is he's not even necessarily around, but that mechanism is still generating revenue to help do good for cancer survivors. And, and so it was like, man, this thing is supposed to work. And when we're tackling 
big freaking problems. You need, um, it's expensive and it's extensive. So, so what people, I wanted people to know was we had to have an uh, engine big enough that could run long enough to actually put human trafficking in a museum, like in our generation. And it's such a big problem. We needed enough, we needed a war chest big enough to last for like a hundred years. Um, so that all the people that are fighting can actually afford to fight. And um, this is also a problem that's being solved in transition. If, if the vision was there's not enough long-term aftercare homes, centers, professionals, there's not enough resource. If you rescued or recovered all of these precious people from American trafficking, there's nowhere for them to go. And so that was the problem we fell in love with solving. And it takes people, but it takes a lot of resource. Mm -hmm. And so we just saw what some of these other groups had done by giving people an opportunity to participate as something that maybe they loved or something that was helping them. And then combining that with fundraising efforts and just said, let's do live strong, but for human trafficking. And then watching Mr. Armstrong kind of go, you know, fall apart and realize his organization is still going. It outlasted even him. That's tight. Like, let's do that. And so uh, we wanted to utilize running community or just people that would be interested in putting on their shoes and going for a walk, like whatever it was, get people involved and then essentially turn that into America's biggest walkathon. <laughs> so for every mile that people walked, we'd have partnerships with corporate America funding all of our little miles. And so you could walk around the block or jog down the street and you are fighting human trafficking, you're participating in the solution. So that was our long-term vision was to somehow create a mechanism where everyday people could go from zero to I'm part of the solution, just like that. And so that I thought it was going to take much longer. And even in the midst of the pandemic, it's, it's actually gone a bit faster than I thought. Um, wow. but that was the vision, create a war chest. So the good guys can do good and, and, and we can actually do something about it together. So I think that's it. That was good. That was good. Dude. I, I love that. And you know, you hit on something with this organization that, um, you know, is, is sometimes, uh, an overthought and it, it's what happens next. Like, so to take care of victims at that point, you know, I, I, someone actually asked me this maybe, uh, two years ago, they called me, they said, um, they had a, a friend who's, you know, a very close family member passed away. And they said, mm. what is the best way to be there and help? And I said, you know, here's the thing that's interesting is that when someone has someone, a loved one pass away, there's a mm. lot of activity around that person during that time. The funeral, there's a lot of phone calls, the dinners, the letters, all that kind of stuff. But three weeks later, the noise dies down, the mm. phone calls go away but mm -hmm. the feeling is still there. Mm -hmm. So in your situation, what you're also taking a look at is, okay, let's like, let's focus on mm -hmm. saving them. And then also what does aftercare look like? Yes. Because I mean, there is a stack of issues and problems there yeah. that yeah. are, that are huge. And if they're yeah. not looked at after at that period of time it could be a phenomenal problem. Well, it's, I think it's part of the problem. And I'll say this even to, to implicate, my own, let's say, industry. Um, the idea of rescuing, the idea of doing good, it, it, it builds this like slick model, but I'm not interested in what it looks like like that. I think a lot of people have been a bit disappointed by like nonprofit work that looks like it's doing something, but then ultimately it's like, is it really? Like, I, I, you know, is, it, is, is this actually working or is this just like, another kind of front that just makes us feel better or whatever. And so I think for a lot of people, that's why I was more committed in the long-term process. Like it's very sexy to say we rescue survivors. I, we need it to happen. We need people to be recovered out of these circumstances. And I, I had a meeting with an aftercare home and a, a leader of a huge running group in a different state. And when we told them how much it was going to cost, per person to, to be there. He was like, yo, we can do an event and like raise some money and dig a well. 
with like one weekend. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry. We are talking about broken and fractured and manipulated human minds, human hearts, human souls. We broke them. And it's going to take all of us a long time to put people back together again. And so for me, my invitation, because I'm a runner, even though I don't want to be sometimes, I'm into slow suffering, right? Like, I, I, like I'm into suffering for a long time. So like, I'm not interested in the flash of the pan. We took them out because what I've experienced in my own work in this is people fall apart in the recovery. And like you said, whether it's someone that passes away or what if it's a beautiful thing? Like, cause I saw an interview once about mothers and how everyone rallies around people when they're pregnant and then you have a baby and everyone goes away. And I think a lot of these issues in America are connected to loneliness, depression, addiction, isolation. And if people aren't endued a little bit with some strength of soul to handle how lonely life is, that's how people fall apart. And so it's not just about getting them out. It's like, if I take a fractured human that's addicted in despair and has had their mind broken by another person, to put them back into a place of confidence in themselves and to even begin to trust the world again. These are complex issues of trauma. And so that loneliness, that fear, all that isolation is going to hit them again. And anyone that's had anyone in their family struggle with addiction or suicide ideation or depression, they know, man, like it's not about the behavior. It's about what's happening inside of these people that drives them to do certain things. And so this is a big deal. To, to strengthen human hearts takes a while. And if yeah. people aren't going to be patient, you're just into the sexy rescue. No, 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 no. Get into the long-term struggle of helping people because that's where they're either going to stay or they're going to fall. And, and our commitment is we just have to build a better thing and say, we're not into the sexiness. We're into the slow, arduous, hard work of actually helping people become themselves again. So I, that's, I love the way you talked about that with, we show up really well in the crisis, but it's, it's all those long, lonely moments. That's what make up a lot of our, our breakdowns. And so we want to be the people that are like, nah, man, we're into the slow thing. We're, we're here for a while. Like, and, and I think that's a better way to build is this isn't sexy. There's nothing fun or cool about this. It's just absolutely necessary. There's a dignity to being patient with people and creating a system for them to fail a bunch of times and figure it out. And, and we all need that at different points in our life too. Even if we're in a really good spot in our life, there's going to come moments where we fail in our heart. We fail in our job. We have a failure in a relationship. And man, it's just nice to know that you don't, you can maybe make mistakes and it's actually part of our journey. Right? So um, that's what we, that's what these survivors deserve that's what these people deserve, especially if they've made a whole bunch of horrible decisions to experience a new beginning and, and be able to make mistakes in that process. Because anyone in recovery will tell you slip ups are part of your sobriety. Like they are part of learning how to do this thing. And so we don't need perfection. I just need them to be safe for long enough that they can figure out if this is even going to work. And so um, it's not like, <laughs> finger guns yeah. this is so cool we're just gonna get them and then it's gonna work like this is this is hard work for these precious souls that are doing the long-term aftercare i just want them to have what they need to actually do it you know yeah definitely so uh, before we uh, talk a little bit further about what this uh, pivot organization is yeah. um i want to hear a little bit about your personal experience so so for <laughs> run against traffic you started at the border, the northern border of Utah and Idaho, mm -hmm. and then you ran lengthwise all the way down to Arizona, the yeah. entire state of Utah. Yeah. And I, I followed every single day. I thought it was absolutely amazing. Tell oh. me, tell me just briefly about your experience, the feeling, yeah. and yeah, just go into that. Yeah, man. We, my wife and I were contacted by two different survivors. Both of those stories did not end well. And that's where we went, wow, we can help do good and get them clear of the blast zone. 
but it's what's happened inside that's causing these people to go back or, or, you know, horrible things. And so my wife, Chrissy Green is such a gangster and, and she has such a huge heart for these precious women. And I wanted her as a woman in America, as a mother, as a daughter, as, as a powerful person to be able to share her story. And, and I wanted to get attention because how she treasured that story was different for me. I was so shocked by the details that I thought it was a joke and I was ready to walk out. I was like, there's no way this is real. This is like a movie. No, this can't, I'm waiting for them to ask me for money or laugh at me. Like this is not a real thing. And Chrissy was so awesome that she was like, if it's not true and they're making fun of us, we can handle that. But if this is a real story and these people are going through this and, and we give up, I can't live with myself. And I was like, so I stuck by my wife having way more character than me. I was just like, this is a joke, you know? And so I wanted her to be able to share her story. And I just wanted to get attention so that my like quiet, more introverted wife could like put this treasure in front of people and go, this is what it looks like in America. Like this happened to us. This is so crazy, you guys, like it's real. And so I decided to do something really hard. Because yeah. my, my goal was, I'll run across the state. Can you do a 5K? Can you put your shoes on and go around the block? Could you do your first marathon? Could you do something hard too? I bet you can because I'm not a good runner. And I, I'm willing to suffer because these people are going through horrific suffering. So my inspiration was, I'm not going to ask someone to do something I'm not willing to do. If I go way too big. How much more empowering will that be for, for someone that's not walked or run or put on their cycled or ridden their bike or done, done anything. I want them to feel with their body that they're part of a solution because it's such a big problem. How do I go so big that then my ask of, can you get involved? It's reasonable. It's like, yes, look at this guy. He's an idiot. He is like a goofy hardcore kid and he just ran like a marathon a day for like 16 days. Like what, what is wrong with him? Doesn't matter. Yes. I will walk my dog as part of your team. Like that's totally fine. Like I just wanted the barrier to entry to be really easy for everyday people because most people are so shocked by how huge this problem is. It's like, how do I get involved? And so that was the initial thought. So the run from Utah, initially I wanted to do a marathon a day, uh, 30 miles a day for 14 days. Um, and I, I had an amazing running coach named Emily Sononi. I had an incredible nutrition dude. His name is Jesse Rich. He's an incredible ultra runner here in Utah. He won the Bear 100 a couple of years ago. Like he's, he's just a boss. And so, and he's plant-based. So he, he came uh, from a different perspective because I wasn't vegan <clears throat> at the time or anything. And he just came and like, help me. So I had an amazing running coach and a nutritionist and I just had time. And she said, let's figure out a plan for you. Cause she could just tell like I was going to do it. And it wasn't yeah. a good idea. Like this was not a smart idea at all. Like, <laughs> like just do a hundred mile run. Okay. Like that makes sense to people. Like, that's fine. Like this is stupid. Like don't, this is bad for you. Like this could really hurt you, but she could just tell like, I didn't care. She's like, I knew you were going to do this. And so I get on these message boards, she said, and go, my client is going to do this thing. And everyone would be like, why? Like, don't, don't tell him no. And she'd, she'd just say, you don't understand his motivation is like, he is going to do this. So I can't even, I can't have this conversation with you guys. I just need to know how to help him. And so then we, yeah, so I, I ran about 30 miles a day for the first handful of days and, and my body like broke apart. Oh <laughs> so my I, gosh. So I got like six days in and then my left there, it rained really bad on like a, a day two or three. And I ended up with all these blisters on my feet. And I, so I was, I was walking and trying to run through it. And because I was running injured, I like injured myself more. And then, so I ended up breaking kind of like my left side, just like couldn't do it. And so I ended up having to stop. I got like 25 miles on like a day 
ran into, we were coming kind of through the city. I ran to this really amazing sports doctor. He did some like needling things and then wrapped my knee and was like, go home, see what you think tomorrow. Can you take the day off? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so I went home and then the next day they drove me to the start where I, I left off. I got like eight miles of jogging in and then it broke down again and I had to stop. I went back to the doctor. So I lost a bit of time. Uh, so I ended up completing, it was 430 miles basically in 17 days. So, but it was, I mean, I had people showing up, homies that we would know, like people from strangers that I didn't know, ultra runners from different parts of Utah met me and would just run with me all of a sudden. I'd have like these random people with me. And so I was. Or a scum, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's what my family said. Get the hat and the goofy Cortez is the patriotic Cortez. So that was, that was the run. We, we ended up doing that run and it was, we raised about 50 grand for the, the cause, which was really tight. It was a really cool start. And, um, and in general, you know, we just, we were able to kind of put it out there. We did a hard thing and the goal wasn't necessarily anything other than I wanted to be able to look anyone in the face and say, if I did that, can, can you do anything? Can you do something? And hopefully that would give them encouragement to like, and then I wanted it to count, you know, I didn't want them to just feel like they were just doing, it's like trying to create a vehicle where they could say, yeah. And I'd say, and every time you do, you really are helping. And so that was always the goal was like, how do we actually mobilize the whole country? When you think of all these big marathons and these huge charity teams, it's like, they do so much good. How can we do that in this issue, which is kind of new to a lot of people. Um, so that was kind of the plan of the big run uh, in 2018. That was October nice. of 2018. So when you completed that, how, let's say, how long did it take to recuperate after that? Did you just not want to move for like three weeks or what? I was like, I was like, done. I wanted to run. Like I wanted to just be like, see, it's fine. And then like go, go back out like four days later. And I was just like, yeah, I think I'm good. I called Jesse and was like, I just don't really want to run right now. And he's like, bro, don't run. You're fine. You know? And he's like an ultra runner, like, like a badass and he was like just don't okay like take a break you know so um i didn't i didn't run for a little while um it was awesome oh my gosh dude thanks for sharing that uh, experience because you know i mean when when you when you made it to salt lake kate and i met up with you and as well as a good handful of people we met up with you over liberty park and yeah. ran around Liberty Park with you, what, two or yeah. three times? Yeah, that was the end. I, I did, I, it was uh, 27 miles to Liberty Park. And then we finished with a 5K as a group um, for that day. Um, that was tight. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, that was awesome. So, <laughs> well, a way to go on that. So, uh, thanks, yes, thanks thank for you. sharing that piece. So, yeah. now let's pivot to pivot. Yeah. Uh, so, so, first of all, um, how did you get involved with this organization? What are you doing for them? It sounds like they've got some pretty cool plans in motion for run against traffic. Uh, yeah. If you can spend a few moments sort of outlining what that all looks like, that'd be great. Yeah. So here's, here's what's interesting. Uh, for those of you guys that didn't know, you guys wouldn't know, uh, Jason, you know, but um, in, in the midst of my training in May of 2018, uh, my little brother Connor passed away really suddenly. And, uh, I was going through texts of his um, and, and one of the things he said, cause I was in a band for a long time and we, we played our final show in February of 2018 and he flew out from Boston with my little brother, Ryan and a bunch of our family met up for this like final weekend of my band. And that was really like the last real good quality time I got with my brothers. Um, and especially with Connor. And, and I remember him texting me when Sleeping Giant ended. And he said, I can't tell if I'm like, I think I'm mad at you that Sleeping Giant is over. But like, I'm also super stoked for you. And he said, because you're always, you've always been a person. And this is just my brother, you know, texting like back and forth, you know, just like random crap. Um, but he said, you've always been committed to, to making a difference in the world. And he said, so I feel like Sleeping Giant, the band is over. But I feel like Sleeping Giant is just going to become a book. And then it's going to become a run. And I'm just really proud of that. You know, so like he, he felt like a part of that journey for me. I hadn't, I, when he passed away, it was really, it sucked. It was horrible. And, and I remember I, I dreamt of him uh, on, in the middle of my run. I actually had a dream. My brother was in it. I got to see him and it was like so powerful. Um, around that time 
is when a couple showed up on the side of the road with snacks and uh, Nikki was in a support vehicle from Mercedes Benz of Draper. They gave us two cars to go with us. And uh, she said, there's a couple here and, and they knew your brother and she just wanted to help out. And so that's how I met them. And so I met this couple uh, and, and she, anyway, she was just so kind and, and just wanted to support somehow. And uh, her husband ran with me for a day and it was like, you know, he's not a runner. And so he was struggling too with me and you know, I was like sure. limping through the days, you know? So um, we ended up meeting this couple and, and on that run, he said, I, I want to help you. And I was like, thank you so much, man. That's really awesome. But I'm also like in a fog and yeah. they became family friends. Well, about a year and a half after that, he came to me and said, I'm a part ownership group of a new company. I'll tell you about it when I can. But just know we've made the decision as a company. We are going to stand against human trafficking. We want to protect children. We want to stop predatory behavior online. And, and we want to be a, a force for good because there's all this stuff happening on these other platforms. Uh, about 62% of all trafficking uh, and predatory like grooming was happening on Facebook during 2020. 18% was on IG. I think 12% was on Snapchat. So when everybody got locked down, trafficking went digital in a big way. And so that, whether people knew that or not, it's like, where are people? People are here. This is where people go. And so I didn't take the internet that serious like you. I'm a hardcore kid. And I thought the internet was like, fake and you do real stuff in real life and the computer like I just didn't get it I was like yeah that's like not a thing so um he called me and said it's a new company I can't tell you about it yet I'll have you sign an NDA in a few months and then I'll let you know but just know we want to help run against traffic and I was like whatever you want me to do man I, that's so cool wow. thank you um so I met the one of the founders on my run so months later, he called me and said, here's what it is. We in Utah are going to build, we've been building, we're millions of dollars in development. We, we are building a new social media platform. We're taking everyone else head on. We're going to make a difference. We're going to make it a better experience for the user. They're not going to feel the same corporate agenda, whether it's right, left or center. Like we just want people to have a better experience and kind of get back to why we got onto social media in the first place. And we want it to actually make a difference outside of social media. And so I was like, man, it's so cool. Let me know however I can help. Uh, I was filming in a movie at the time and my producer is on the board of Run Against Traffic. And so uh, I was called at that point and, and given the opportunity to, to actually invest in the company this months later and actually become part of the ownership team. So I wear two hats. It's important for me to say I'm wearing two hats kind of in this world because I have this like pivot hat as an investor and an owner. But my first priority was as the founder and the a board member of Running Against Traffic. And so I knew there was this cool partnership because, again, in the marketplace, we need funding, we need resource, we need connections. And I thought, wow, tech in the marketplace is big enough. Wow, that could be a really cool partnership because right now we've got individuals running digital runs when COVID hit, you know, all over the country. And we're making, you know, 1500 bucks or, you know, people are sending in donations and stuff and it's like little ones and twos and it's awesome. But I'm like, man, it's going to take a long time, uh, especially getting kind of the gut punch of we can't get together, man. I, I don't know how this is going to happen. So we kind of got the wind knocked out of us a little bit. And then it was like, we got put right at the tip of the spear again. And so uh, partnering with Pivot in terms of as a social media and a tech company, so exciting because it's just big enough to really provide some horsepower to what we're doing. Yeah. Um, visibility and with money with, I mean, it's big enough in the marketplace that it's like, it's kind of the kind of partner that you want um, to help you do good. So that's kind of how it came together was actually on the run. I ended up meeting what, who would wow. become a founder on that run. So the reason I started with my brother is it feels like a gift from my little brother to me. Yeah. And that's kind of how it all has come together is uh, now I'm a part of this, tech world and uh and and we're partnering together uh with pivot at the at kind of the beginning of the launch of the company they're like we wanted to put our money where our mouth was from the jump and so they they basically called me and said for the month of december which is kind of national giving month uh january 11th is a trafficking awareness day and so they basically said from december 1st up till trafficking awareness day anytime anyone anywhere downloads this app we're giving a dollar to your foundation and 
So I just went, wow, like I'm going to blow this thing up now. This is awesome. Like, let's go. Like, it doesn't cost anybody anything. Like, this is great. Like, tell your friends, tell everyone, tell the world. Oh my gosh. Like, so it's cool in terms of pivot, creating a better product and having more people on the platform, creating some momentum to really, yeah. really challenge what's going on in the marketplace. We need people there. Like we've got plenty of money and, and they've got creative strategy and businesses happening we're going to be fine money wise, but we just want people there and we want to keep developing the app. So it's like, Oh, now we get to, we get to bring all the people. This is so cool. Mm -hmm. And then by the by, Oh my gosh, like it's, they're also going to give me a big happy Gilmore size check at the end of it. This is going to be great. Like I'm going to put it in the back of my car. Like it's awesome. So our ambition was we're at the beginning of this journey, but if we can get a hundred thousand people to download this app, they'll give us a check for a hundred grand. Like, Holy smokes. Like, we have partners and people all over the country that are looking for resource and hundred grand is really a drop in the bucket in the midst of this, but it's so exciting for people to go, Whoa, that's like a real thing. It's like, yes, we are here. We're going to do some stuff. Um, so that's kind of where we are now with pivot, but it, it happened because of the run really. It ultimately did. Wow. Gosh, that's seriously amazing how that uh, all comes together. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. It's like, Gosh. couldn't plan it. Could not. So cool. No, I'd say, and you know, I mean, and Tommy, you're you're you've got a huge heart. You're always out there trying to do something better for the world. I mean, you were in a wildly successful hardcore band that traveled all around the world, yeah. uh, called Sleeping Giant. And you said yeah. that uh, the last show was in 2018, right? Yep. And that was a is is it fair me to if, of me to say it was a Christian hardcore band or was oh it just, yeah yeah for sure I was okay. total. Preacher, Jesus, magic, weirdo, for sure. That was me going for it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Crying that's, that's great. I just love God. Let me yell about it. <laughs> that, was awesome. that was it. It was like my whole career. I mean, and you were traveling around the world. I mean, you were, you've got, you've always got some, so many cool things going on, and it's extremely yeah. fun to see um, the the great you're doing in the world right now. And uh, so, so let's let's talk about where where can people find you? So we've got uh, at is it at Tommy Green uh, on uh, Instagram? It's at Tommy Runs Pivot on Instagram. And to be honest with you guys, probably over the next seven to eight months, I'm gonna be I'm just at Tommy on Pivot. So I'm gonna be moving. Like most everything we're doing is going to our partner at this point um, because as many creatives that you might have on the show will tell you ad spend on YouTube and Facebook and these other places like this algorithm that you have to keep up with is so expensive and confusing that that's been the game changer for pivot is uh, creating customizable feeds. So if you have a million followers and they all follow your custom feed, they all see your content and you don't have to pay for it. So for businesses and brands and creatives, it's a real game changer because now we don't have to compete. I don't have to pay to play anymore. Um, and so for me, I'm going to be moving most of what Run Against Traffic and what I'm doing personally over to this new platform because I really, I've just gone to a spot where I can't even see my wife's posts anymore. Like I, it's just, it's just not fun anymore. Like it doesn't feel good. And the reason I got on was to stay connected to people I met all over the country, all over the world while being in the band and tell someone happy birthday or see their baby or like, you know, that's what I wanted to be on here is like, I want to see, I want to be seen and be celebrated. And I want to do that for other people. And it's kind of button lost on these other spots. So yeah, at Tommy runs pivot is me on IG. I'm Tommy green on Facebook, but I'm, I can't wait. I'm Tommy to runs pivot pivot. Yeah. yeah. At Tommy runs P Y V O T T. And that was just because I'm just getting ready to leave. Like I, I'm like, I hear a lot of people that are like, man, I'm so tired. It's, it's like, okay, leave. Good. I got a spot. You should come. <laughs> come Is on that over. correct right there? <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah. Okay. So you can, yeah. You can hit me up there. That'll be tight. So yeah, so that's been the thing. Uh at Tommy on Pivot. You can uh just you can hit us up. I run against traffic.com. Um and in a lot of ways, like uh we're gonna be doing a whole bunch in the pivot universe. So that's really where I would love people to eventually come and find us because I'm gonna slowly phase out of these other guys because I don't wanna I don't wanna be there necessarily. So We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's uh, I, I love it. Uh, so uh, they are located in uh, Orem, Utah, you said. Yep. Yeah. They're like a okay. Utah County company. So. Okay. Perfect. Good. I, I think we've covered some amazing ground here. We've gotten to know 
uh, a lot more about you, some of your background, and and uh, what's yes, gotten you involved in the both the nonprofit as well as Pivot. Yeah. Um, is there anything that I may have missed that we need to share on this interview today? I want to make sure we cover all the all the fun stuff. No, I think the dollar for download campaign is is was the main thing. But if there's anyone that ends up being a guest or someone that you know that's struggling gaining traction in the social media marketplace, if Pivot can help any of them, feel free to message me and I'll put them in touch with the team. But our goal is to serve business owners and brands and creatives and stuff. So the only thing I could say that hasn't been necessarily said is like, we have a lot to offer people that are looking for an alternative in these other places. And um, that's really important too. I think the company culture. So anyone that needs options or just wants to know that options can be on the horizon, let us know. Nice. This is yeah, awesome. Man. Tommy, I, uh, I appreciate you as a friend. I mean, we've known each other for more than two decades. <laughs> um, I've, uh, I, we've, we've seen each other through thick and thin and, and uh, everything in between. Yeah. And I appreciate you and I'm extremely happy to have you on the show today. Thank you so much. It's such an honor, Jason. Really love you a lot, man. Mad respect for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, brother. And the same goes for you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move to a wrap up then. I'm going to uh, have you hang out in the green room for a few moments Tight. Uh, while I wrap it up. Um, I, I've got some M&Ms back there, so feel free to have some M&Ms. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, okay. what, one day when I actually have a real green room, I will have some M&Ms. And, and they're all going to be green. Green. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was like, please go there. Please go there. So tight. That's sick. Well, thank you. Uh, it, you're welcome, my brother. We'll talk to you here in just one second. All right. So there you go, Tommy Green. Um, we've got all kinds of stuff going on. And and uh, uh, gosh, check him out. Follow him, as you see there, at Tommy Runs. Uh, pivot. Um, so check that uh, organization out. Download on uh, Android and iPhone. Uh, sounds like they've got a really cool app. I'm going to be downloading it and checking it out myself. Uh, so again, thank you so much for joining us here on Always the Journey TV episode number 55. I'm going to uh, come over here and check out uh, our outro music and see how that rolls. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and like and subscribe. It would be sincerely appreciated. And if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. And if I don't have the answers to it, I know Tommy will. So anyway, have an amazing week, my friends. Take care.